it's a big, uh, this is the biggest state I've been working on for about 10 years, and I go back about twice a year in uh, upstate New York. Um, and that's the front of the house. It did have an avenue with elms on both sides of it leading to that front door. And after about five years, I got the, the owner to cut them down because the courtyard was too small. It was surrounded by walls for cars to turn round. And it sort of broke the house up by having this avenue in the front of it. It took a lot of hard work to get that one through. But um, he actually came round to it in the end, which was nice. Again, it's upstate New York. It gets colder than we do, and it gets hotter uh, than we do in the summer. But most things you sort of recognize, really. And, and that's what was the... The car turnaround just made into a, a little courtyard outside the front garden. And of course, catalpas are wild there, the American bean tree, with potentillas and lavenders and oh, all sorts of things you would know. And at the back of the house, we put in very wide, I widened the steps right out, because uh, it has a lovely view from that main hall running through to the, to the front door. And that's the view, and we put in this sort of pavilion uh, with a wonderful copper beech. And much of that planting is to do with working with the, the copperiness of the copper beech and even the furniture I've painted a sort of dull red. Looking out to the landscape beyond. I'm interested in balance of structure and uh, existing features and the width and the, the color of the borders. There's a lot of gray after all those alliums and things to work with the, uh, the copperiness of the Vegas. Yes, there are various gardens. They're, they're called the hanging gardens beneath all that copper beach. And this is a Mediterranean one. It's a fake one. And the olives I've used, a form of Eliagnus and much of the grey stuff, of course, goes in the greenhouse in, in the winter. But it gives you that sort of grey in the heat of summer. It gives you that Mediterranean feel. And you come down those walled gardens past this other little pavilion to a sort of pergola square and down the steps to the, to the swimming pool. The steps were, were large and the scale was right, but by running plants in at different levels, it looked as though water was almost running over them in a way. And it sort of softened the whole effect because they're granite too. Uh, a bit like that. Hell to mow that grass. I wouldn't do it for any English plant, but this one was all right. <laughs> With the pool house. <laughs> And the sort of jacuzzi beyond, and then it runs on uh, to the to the landscape. Big scale stuff, and on another side of the house, uh, opened it right out the views to the Adirondacks. There was an orchard; you can see it left and right. And we've moved all the trees across that view and relocated them. And they have some wild horses down there. They're um. Um, what do you call them? Um, Mustang. This is another word, but they are Mustangs. Yes, yes. The number of purebred Mustangs left are very limited. Um, and this guy uh, is breeding them up. Just other details using the granite uh, of the area. And beneath the house, we had put in a tennis court recently. And I work with Anthony Archer Wills, who now has moved to the States and lives not far away. He um, did this wonderful lake in another part of the, the property. It's 650 acres, so there's lots of bits. And just a view from the terrace looking out. About 10 years ago, the Chicago Botanic Garden came to me and said they wanted to do an English garden. So again, we did all this business. What do you mean by English? So we tried to work in 
um, a sunken garden like a bit of Great Dixter. We did a formal garden. We did a cottage garden. We did a herb garden. We did a sort of ode to Russell Page and, and long sort of borders. And that's the end of my garden, looking out to the lake. And this planting all around here is uh, Jim Van Sweden. And that's one of my pepper pots, they're called, the two of them at either end of this, this balustrading. And there's the, the great Dexter sunken pool. And the formal daisy garden. So we, you do daisies from Deronicums right through to asters and things at the end of the year. And the sort of pergola walk with a bit of Russell Page on the left, the checkerboard. And huge apple trees they brought in, which gave it an, en an English sort of feeling straight away. There's the checkerboard. The gray has to be replenished because uh, it can't stand the winter. But the box is fine. We're in Poland now, would you believe? This is a house that was built about 1800. Uh, Chopin is supposed to have played there. It was a house that was owned by minor sort of Polish royals when they existed. And then uh, about 1937, rumor has it a Jewish family had it. And then the Germans took it and had it as a, a sort of command post. And then the Russians came, and they converted it into flats. And at the big sort of changeover, when the, the wall came down, my client probably picked it up amazingly cheaply, I imagine, and has restored it most sort of beautifully. And happily, he read the garden book. So there's a point, you know. Get your pen out and write things, and it, you may be surprised who reads them, and you get them on the telephone. <gasps> you can't believe it. It's wonderful. Anyway, we've done the four sides of this house. We looked at the front, and this is the east end with the kitchen dining room running there, and I put in um, a terrace there, which is getting covered over now, uh, and it c connects down to pools and various terraces running on down the hill. All done in this concrete block, actually, rendered to match the sort of stucco of the house. On the south-facing side of the house, there's a, there was a lake at the bottom there, and he wanted to have a pavilion uh, at the top of a cascade. i never done a cascade like this before in my life. Happily, they had a very good engineer working, and I worked with him. And the thing's beginning to mellow in. It doesn't look quite so naked as when one first did it. And there it is running and dripping. This great bowl hangs out over the lake. I built three of those little pavilions. That's, that's one of them. There's a rose garden somewhere and a flower garden. And a, and a pergola done in um, done in metal with, with sort of strained wire between. That's another pavilion and those terraces running down from the house. And they wanted to put in an indoor swimming pool, which was very out of character with the whole place. So we hid it behind that little sort of pavilion and we're just beginning to uh, excavate there. You can see the lake to the left beyond. There's the swimming pool finished, very flat and horizontal and, and under sort of stated in a way, with the terraces riding up to the house. And that becomes a sunbathing sort of roof. And from the house you see there's the pavilion and you don't see the swimming pool uh, beyond. There's that all beginning to knit in now. <laughs> 